iOS 18 is finally here and you guys, this might be my favorite update that Apple has ever rolled out. It's certainly Apple's most customizable update yet which we love. So today we're gonna dive into the latest, greatest iOS 18 features. I'll show you all the fun ways to customize your home screen, your icons, your lock screen, and more. Plus some hidden gems, some features that I am obsessed with that you're not gonna wanna miss. So let's go. Okay, first up, let's talk about the home screen. This is probably the most anticipated change. iOS 18 has introduced complete app customization. So if you tap and hold on the background, you can still rearrange apps and widgets like before. You can just drag them around. You can also tap on that bottom bar to easily hide or show any pages that you have. And if you click edit in the top left, you'll notice for the first time a new option to customize. You can essentially now change app color sizes and even the placement on your home screen, which is sweet. If we click on customize, as you'll notice, my phone is in dark mode, so apps kind of have some dark features on them. If I went back to light mode, they would all be light. We have these different options on the bottom. So we have light icons. We have fully dark icons, meaning every part of the apps are pretty dark. We have automatic, which changes whether you have light or dark mode on. So obviously light would be light and dark would be dark. And then we have tinted, which which I think is what everyone got the most excited for, but also a little bit disappointed. So the tinted feature basically allows you to add these colorful accents to your app icons, which in theory is so cool. The only problem is that all the apps end up being dark, which a lot of people have a problem with. Even if I put my phone back into light mode, they still stay dark like that. So I know a lot of people are disappointed in that. I mean, I still think it's really cool that we can customize them in general. We used to not be able to do that at all. And then another cool thing that you can do is if you don't want the text to display and you want a little bit of a cleaner screen, you can click large icons and that'll make all of your icons big. There won't be any text on the bottom, which is honestly pretty cool. I might try to mess around with this for a little while. And then the little sun in the upper left can control kind of the dimness of the background. So if you want a little bit of a darker shadowy background, you click that, but I'm just gonna leave mine like this. Also, maybe one of my favorite new features the ability to put icons wherever you want on the home screen. If you've been subscribed for a while, then you'll remember my invisible icons videos. I used to come up with all these elaborate hacks to like get it to do that. Well, gone are the days of needing to take all those steps because now you can simply force touch an app and just drag it to wherever you want it to go, which is so, so clutch. This makes it really fun for just having certain backgrounds that you wanna maybe put apps around in a certain way or showcase the subject in a photo. You can have a lot of fun customizing this. I'm definitely gonna play with it a lot. And while we're on the topic of customizing, app icons, you can finally, finally update and customize the two defaulted icons on the bottom of your lock screens. To do this, you're gonna lock your phone and then tap and hold on the background click customize and then the lock screen, of course. So always it defaults to flashlight and camera. And then if you just delete this shortcut, you can actually scroll through all the different icons that you're allowed to use. I use the camera shortcut a ton, so I'm not gonna change that one, but I think I'm gonna change this left-hand one to open Instagram. And you can do that by just clicking on the plus button, clicking open app, and then choosing Instagram. I also noticed that Instagram has its own button and I wasn't sure what that was, so I tried it and I guess it just opens Instagram's camera, but then it doesn't actually go to the app, so I don't know. You could also just get rid of them altogether if you want a cleaner look, so there's plenty of options here. I also use widgets on the lock screen to open other apps, like Flow is actually the app that I like to take photos in mostly, so I have that one there as well. But yeah, I think this is just so fun to finally be able to actually customize the lock screen more so to your liking. Okay. Okay, let's talk widgets. We love widgets. There are plenty of new widgets also. So when it comes to widgets, we can still add widgets by force touching the background, clicking edit, and then add widget. But you'll also notice that you can drag the corner of any widget to easily change the size, which is just very streamlined, very easy. Another way to do this is to just force touch the widget and select the size you want. And that's actually another kind of shortcut for adding a new widget is just go to the app on your home screen that you want to make in 
into a widget, force touch that app, and it'll basically show you how this could show up as a widget instead. All right, next we have the Control Center. So the Control Center has gotten a serious upgrade in iOS 18. You can now swipe between different control groups, resize and rearrange controls to your liking, and favorite your most used controls for quick access, which is really cool. This makes me very happy, but it's not like revolutionary. Okay, bonus time. Here's a little bonus secret feature that I think if you're a content creator, you're especially gonna love this, but if you're not, you still might love this. And that is that now when you are recording a video on your camera, you can actually pause the video recording and then resume it again when you're ready. So if you're someone like me and you wanna talk on camera or you're posting a story, instead of actually having to edit in post, you can just pause the recording, pick it up again when you're ready, and then you have one smooth video clip, but with those pauses taken out. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, I'm gonna think. And I remembered what I was gonna say but it's as if I didn't even have to edit. Pretty sweet, if you ask me. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the Photos app. I have loved this redesign so far. I think it is just a lot smoother and easier to use. It makes more sense. And most of all, once again, it's more customizable than ever before. The app has been completely redesigned into a single clean layout with no bottom buttons, which kind of cluttered the screen. So the new features include automatic collections. Your photos are now grouped into smart collections like trips, which I thought was really, really cool. You don't have to make your own album. It'll just kind of know you went on a trip, events, or people and pets. You also have pinned collections. So if you have favorite albums or other kind of groups that you want easy access to, you can customize what you want to pin to the top of kind of your collections. You can also now customize the view of your actual camera roll. So one of the things that I love the most is you can actually delete, or not delete, but hide certain things from your camera roll library view, but they won't be gone. So for example, one thing I've always wanted to do is hide screenshots and pictures of receipts and stuff from my actual camera roll view, but I need those pictures still. So now you can actually view or hide those from the camera roll view while still keeping them organized in a separate view. And the last thing I really love is this new day view. So no matter what, you can kind of go in and see every single day what you have taken. So that's just another fun way to kind of access your memories and your videos and photos. Plus the customized and reorder feature allows you to really just drag and drop and customize exactly the way that you want to view the Photos app, which I think is so important because one of the biggest things I do on this phone is capture photos and videos. So it really helps to have a better way to customize and organize all of those on my phone. All right, let's talk messages. So these are some fun little updates to messages. First of all, there's new tap back menu reactions. And I didn't know what tap back was. I guess that's what Apple calls the like reactions to text, like double tap to heart it or whatever. So now there's a new menu and you can use any emoji to react to a text message, which is cool, but your most used emojis will actually show up first. There's also new text effects, which like, I don't know if I'm ever gonna use these, but I do think they're pretty cool. So you can make things bold or animated or just whatever you want. But the long awaited feature that I know I'm gonna use, and I hope other people do too, is the sending a text later feature. You can actually schedule a message to go out at a later time or date. This is perfect for things like happy birthday texts or just things that you don't want to forget or if you're up scrolling till 2 a.m. and you don't want to wake anyone up, you can schedule something to go out at 8 a.m. So I really love this feature and I'm excited to use this. Another helpful feature, not as glamorous, but still helpful is that messages you can send now via satellite. So even if you're outside of cell coverage, you'll be able to send messages, which obviously is great for like safety reasons, but yeah, that's messages. Obviously the other people need to be on iOS 18 as well to receive these different reactions, but hopefully everyone updates soon enough. <laughs> Let me know down below if you have updated your software yet. Okay, and lastly, just some other kind of new features and app updates. We've got some updates to the journal app, so it's getting smarter. I really wanna be able to have the journals app on MacBook because I just don't wanna do it on my phone. I do too much on my phone, but I really would love to journal more. So my request to Apple is please add the journals app to the MacBook. Thank you. <laughs> There's also a brand new passwords app and I am a fan of this because I feel like I'm always going into my settings to find my saved passwords and now it's all just in one place and a bit of an easier to understand kind of interface. So definitely a fan of that. On that same note, did you know you can actually now hide certain apps from your home screen or require face ID in order to get into them. So here's how to do that. All you have to do is force touch the app you want to lock or hide 
click require face ID, and then you can either choose to just require the face ID, or you can actually hide the app from your homepage and app library. When you do that, the app becomes unsearchable in the app library, but will show up down at the bottom in a folder called hidden. You can just as easily undo this by force touching the app again and clicking don't require face ID. Another cool little shortcut that I have been waiting for is when you click to add a photo or a video to an album, it now predicts what album you're gonna choose. So that way you don't have to scroll through all your albums every time you wanna add a photo. The only thing is that I think it just uses the most recent album though, so hopefully it gets smarter, but still it has saved me so much time already. And lastly, reminders are now fully integrated with the calendar app. So if you do set a reminder to go off at a certain time, you can actually keep everything synced up in that one place. It'll show up on your calendar and no more kind of going back and forth between those. I really like the reminders app because I feel like it's easy to ask Siri to create a reminder for me. Whereas when I'm using the calendar, I tend to just go in manually. So that's pretty sweet. And then lastly, we do have to mention Apple Intelligence, even though it's not out yet. I am so excited for it to come out. I'm very eager to see if it makes everything easier. It's supposed to roll out in a month or so, and it will roll out to anyone with iOS 18, I think. Don't quote me on that. I'll double check whatever I say right here is the truth. <laughs> I actually am surprised it's taken Apple so long to roll out some sort of AI, but knowing Apple, they wanna get it right. They don't want to just throw something out there that's not perfect. So I'm very excited to see if that ends up being a worthwhile update and whether I use it a lot. So let me know if you have updated yet and what your favorite feature is down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and be sure to subscribe for more. I'm definitely gonna post some iPad OS customization videos, maybe some MacBook. And so we'll see you there. See you my next video. Love you so much.